So it, it's been really a long time since I did a video. Uh, I think, I guess August was the last video I put out for the Sling TSI. And so my here, here's my update. I plan to paint, I did everything out of sequence. You can see I've done some painting over here. I planned to paint, my budget for the time was maybe six weeks and it took me five months. So uh, I'll explain some of that. So first thing to start with is color selection. I chose four colors. I've got two colors or two shades of blue, white, and sport green. And then I have a clear coat. So if you, as you can tell, uh, everything has been, that's the elevator. I've got all my control surfaces over here, flaps, rudder, aileron, horizontal stabilizer. Everything's been painted and clear coated. I'm pretty happy with everything, but imagine how long this has to take for each individual component. It's got four colors on it. Here's my rudder, and that probably took three weeks. You gotta etch the aluminum. That's where you start. You etch it with a chemical etch, let it dry within 24 hours, apply the primer. These are the wings, I got both wings painted now. Apply the primer, sand the primer. That's two coats. Okay, so now I can come in and I can start masking for my lines. That takes a little bit of time to get established so that the lines are exactly where you want to be and symmetrical on both sides of whatever it is you're painting. If you're painting the elevator, it's got to be, you know, that has to be symmetrical on both sides so then you mask off for one color it only takes 45 minutes to paint but it could take a day or two days to mask then that color dries then you pull that off pull that mask off and remask for the next color and then the next color and then the next color so that doesn't mean I had Ish, or I didn't have any issues. I had several issues. I had some equipment issues. I had some uh, well pressure in my main uh, compressor. I have this Eastwood 3060 compressor over here. And I think I was holding at about 140 PSI, which was too much. I've dialed it now down to about 90 PSI. That's really helped a lot because that extra pressure puts water in the lines, even though I have two air dryers. Where is it? There's an air dryer back here. There's an air dryer, and then I have a, two inline air dryers. All right, well, I had to fix that. There were several times where I paint like this blue, dark blue. On this wing, I had some just blobs that would come out as in the form of water. There's nothing you can do about it. So you just let it dry, and then when it dries, you come back and you sand it out, and then you reapply the, the top coat. Here's the wheel pants over here. And these took probably two weeks to paint. Um, and I'm a perfectionist, so if it's not right, I'm doing it again. I even painted the seat pans. Seat pans front and back. You can see the backs of these seat pans are painted. Over here, I've got the spinner painted. See there. So, what else? Uh, lots of places where you have to, like for here, if there's a rivet, where is he? Right here. You got to split that rivet in half, and I'm using aluminum 
foil tape for that. You can't just put masking tape over that. You got to really make sure that that line is clear on that. You know that it's a it's a true line, and there's no bleed through on each side of each rivet. So every time you encounter a rivet, maybe 10 minutes to get that masked. Probably guys that are doing this professionally don't take 10 minutes to mask a rivet. Um, here we got more rivets. Look at all these rivets here. It's all have to be masked off perfectly. Then when you do get bleed through after it dries, you have to clean that up. Um, and then there's places where, of course, you know, I just didn't watch what I was doing. I put maybe too much down, too much top coat down. So then that takes some wet sanding. I've had to repaint several places. Uh, this knock a duck is a pain in the ass, but my finger down here. I think it looks okay. So anyway, oh, and then the clear coat. Well, I use the Stewart's clear coat. They call it a clear coat. To me, it looks like it's a shiny satin. It's not really that clear to me. I didn't like it. So I found this uh, Sherwin Williams says it's Sherwin Williams. I don't. Where is it? Right down here. It says Acme. But when I ordered it on Amazon, it says Sherwin Williams. So Acme Finish um, Ultimate Overall Clear Coat. And man, is that stuff awesome. But it's also really hard to work with because with the Stewart system, this is all water based. So it's not that caustic, not too bad. I can wear my, uh, you know, regular respirator and work with that. But that clear coat is some pretty rough stuff. And so I've got my fresh air breathing device here. I'm using a HVLP pump for that. And I'll tell you, once you put the clear coat down, this stuff here, you just got to completely evacuate the building. There's no way. You can't even stay in the same room with even that inside that paint booth. Um... And it just, I mean, it just makes you dizzy and crazy, just nuts. Not nuts, but I mean, it just, it makes you feel like you've been smoking something for sure if you get a whiff of it. So that makes it a pain. And then you gotta, then you gotta leave the building entirely and let that thing sit for three or four hours. But the, uh, but the result was fantastic. I mean, that clear coat, and it's also a, a gift in that it's, it fixes a lot of, mistakes because if i had not clear coated all this and this has got dust on it so it looks kind of dull but once the dust comes off that clear coat changes everything it fixes so much um just looks so nice i love it so i'm happy with that so what's the current state of painting well as you can see i have a fuselage on a rotisserie where I have the bottom portion painted. Why is it still on rotisserie? Why didn't I paint the whole airplane? Well, I wanted to get that bottom painted. I need to get the underside of this, this uh, fuselage painted while it's still on rotisserie. And then I'm going to come behind that and install the canopy and then the top skin. Um, and then, of course, I also have the, the, the cowling. That's left to be painted, too. So really out of sequence and i know anybody else is going to do their tsi most 99 percent of people do not paint their airplane as they build but uh i chose to do this and i'll tell you what i've learned and this is my second airplane that i've painted and this one has been a completely different experience just because of the challenge and uh, the intricacies of doing it painting an airplane is a completely separate project from building an airplane they're just not even on the same they're two different things i mean it's just uh building an airplane and finishing airplanes one thing painting an airplane and finish painting an airplane is another thing and that's why people pay big money to have their airplane painted i probably have less than five thousand in this not including my time but material wise so far probably 
you know, five grand. You know, I might have saved 30 grand if I had paid somebody else to do it. And I'm not disappointed, and I probably would do it again. Um, I'm just stubborn like that. But so anyway, I'll finish the rest of it and uh, show you the completed uh, airplane at that point. Now, let's move on to where am I so far on the build? Well, I'm sure you can imagine I was happy to get back to the actual building. And so that involved at this point um, installing all of my control sticks, torque tubes, push rod, tie-in or tie rod ends, um, autopilot connections and all of that. So most people tell you what a challenge this is. It's this whole area here as well as this rear torque tube for the elevator. And yeah, I had a little bit of a challenge myself, but I tell you what I found that really helped me out a lot is I use this stuff here. It's a valve grinding compound. And what I did was I just simply put, I, when this was all out, not connected and in, inside the brackets here, I just applied some valve grinding compound on the tube. Then I would slide the um, bushing over the top of it and then just start working it with my hand back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So now what I'm doing is I'm literally I'm literally changing the surface of both both of the bushing and the tube, and then I'd wash it out with mineral spirits, install it, put some dry lube in there, and that really made the difference. That made everything really kind of free up. Um, the sticks feel very nice. I have the autopilot push rods connected here, and so there's a little bit of resistance on those, but overall, all of my control uh, controls are installed and feeling pretty good about all of that. Everything back here, even the push rod going back to the elevator is installed. Everything is uh, finger tight. I don't have the nylocks fully engaged yet. So I'm just kind of leaving it until I'm absolutely 100% ready to tighten those down. But at this point, everything feels good. And so at the same time, while I'm completing that part up, I've now started wiring. I'm using advanced flight systems. Uh, all the components for my, they did the panel. They built my panel for me. If you haven't seen the panel, I have it over here. I'm trying to be slow. People tell me I'm too jerky with the camera. So this is the panel from advanced flight systems. And I received this probably back in May or June of 24 using the AF6600 EFIS, uh, Garmin G5. I've got, uh, I've got uh, the utility type of, of just the standard um, fuel pump switches because I'm using the Midwest or um, Aerospace Innovations. I'm using their boost pump system. And so that requires these types of switches and i've got all the switches down here now intercom i pulled that out because i'm running those cables and i wanted to get those through the proper bushing holes or, or holes with the grommets in there this is a this opening here is in the event i'm going to install a wash navigator which i probably will at some point i just didn't have them build that at the time they had the panel built so that's what the panel looks like and obviously over here i've got an ipad mount it's a pretty basic panel, but uh, there are two comm radios, but only one is mounted on the panel as a backup. Both of them will be operated through the EFIS system, and if I ever have a problem, if I lose my EFIS, the G5, my, my backup for my attitude indicator, airspeed, altitude, all that, and then my, the other one will be the backup radio, but two radios in there. Um, flap switch here. I have, I'm going to also have a, a blue knob for a propeller. That's the only thing on this engine that's not going to be part of the FADEX system. I will have a, the ability to hand, manually control the prop, uh, just kind of way I prefer it. I wanted to have the ability to fine tune it. I know that the 
I know that the console they make now, they have an area here if you want to install a, a, a blue knob in there, but they just this was not available to me at the time I made my purchase, so um, I couldn't get that. You'll see some of the TSIs now that have, have three levers on the console and the middle one is for the prop. So, um, yeah, mine's going to be on the panel, which I'm fine with. And then thirdly, or lastly there on that panel, I didn't show you, but there'll be the parachute. Uh, I'm going to have the parachute cable installed. I don't have the parachute itself ordered or the rocket tube, which is right here. I don't have that ordered. And I don't know if I'll have that when I'm ready to fly or not, but uh, eventually I will inst install the parachute. So this is where I am. I'm just uh, sorting out all the wiring and it's really nice with this uh, advanced flight systems, ACM, advanced control module. What that thing, eventually, what, it, what it ultimately does is it removes all of the circuit breakers. So there, if, you, if you notice when I was over at the panel a minute ago, the only circuit breaker that's on there is for the um, alternator and uh, everything else is just internal. I'll, look on, I'll be able to look on the EFIS. I can look at each individual component and tell how many amps that component's drawing. Um, and so it just kind of streamlines everything. And so everything, if you notice, I mounted this in that spot because where the iPad mount is, I can take that plate off and I can just reach in there and, and adjust anything that needs to be taken care of. Um, this is the boost pump controller. So you can look more into that. Just look at the uh, aerospace uh, innovations website, and it gives you a full description on what that does. Uh, it basically, in, in among other things, uh, gives you the ability to switch tanks without manually have to, having to flip the switches. It, it just, you move the you move the fuel selector from left to right and it changes the pumps automatically so you're not flipping the switches but it does more than that as well and mostly also because everything is um, controlled from the wing roots at the tanks so I, I prefer a low wing to have pumps from the tanks I don't care for gravity flow that's kind of a big thing for me but that's not what they advertise the the intelligent boost pump system for they advertise it for the uh, uh, vapor that you can get with the with the mo gas at higher altitudes and there's a full write up in there as to what that's all about but um, anyway it's it's just an advanced way to manage and maintain your pressures from your tanks as well as switching your tanks automatically just removing more of the um you know the burden from the pilot so that's where i am for now let's see i can't think of much more i'm just uh having a I, I, it sounds crazy but i do enjoy the wiring it just kind of helps you know i like organizing it and i like i like installing the pens and the d pen sub pens whatever those are the connectors and all that i enjoy that sort of stuff so sounds crazy but you know i like it um so there's my update a little longer than i thought but uh that's what's going on with the sling tsi after a long break <laughs>